While I'm not a big fan of the automatic pitch correction effect, I am a huge fan of the manual pitch correction effect. It's easy to use, it's fun, and can make a positive difference to your project when you're trying to deal with pitch issues. So to follow along with this tutorial, go get these two files, the Tone 440 WAV files inside the Working Files Demo Files folder. Remember Tone 440 back in some of the early tutorials? It's back. And then the Singer Pitch Correction Wave Effect is inside Music. Just too hard to find and down here a little ways. There it is. Okay. Now here we are on the Waveform view. And this is not the view that you work in when you work with this effect. But we'll switch to that view when we switch to that effect. So I'm going to go to Effects, Time and Pitch, and there is Manual Pitch Correction. It's a process effect, which means you cannot apply it inside the Effects Rack and you cannot apply it inside the multi-track session. You can apply it only directly to a file here in the waveform view or the pitch correction view or the spectral frequency view. But whenever you apply it, it's gonna to switch to the spectral pitch display. So when I click on this, it's gonna switch over to that display and it's also gonna change the heads up display to add another line down the bottom. So just watch the HUD here, the heads up display. And also you'll see how we switch over to the spectral pitch display when we click it. Boom, there we are, it switches over and adds that little line there to the HUD. And it says sense and has a 16th note there. Well, we're not talking about rhythm here. Sense is a term that refers to pitch. I'll explain that in more detail when we switch over to the Tone 440 WAV file. But here we are. It makes these changes. It puts up the spectral pitch display and it changes the display from blue to green. Now you might have forgotten that it was blue before. But I'll just drag up the sense sign to show you that green is the after and blue is the before. Blue is the original pitch and green is the changed pitch. That's how that works. Well, there's one other thing that shows up when you add the manual pitch correction effect, but we don't see it here. And that's a little bit of a problem. So you need to remind yourself that when you open this guy up, the most important feature, the thing that you absolutely must see to make this effect work, is this little thing called a pitch envelope. And the pitch envelope resides on top of the waveform display, not down here. So you need to see the waveform display. So to make sure you see that, pull this guy down. There we go. And there's this yellow line. And that yellow line is the pitch envelope. They like to use the term envelope in audio. It means something that you can change over time by adding keyframes to it. If I just click and drag this, you can see that we're going to adjust the pitch this way instead of just using the numeric display here. So to give you a sense of what the term sense means, I want to switch over to Tone 440. So I'll go over here. When I do that, it opens up the waveform display because we don't have the effect applied to it. And it has this rectangle that you've seen before. It's really not a rectangle, it's waves. I just need to zoom in. There are those waves. I'll zoom out by pressing the backslash key. Let's go get that effect. Effects, time and pitch, manual pitch correction. And now we switch over to the spectral pitch display. And because we pulled this down before, now it does display the pitch envelope, which is good. And down here in the spectral pitch display, you see you just have this green line because the green line is on top of the blue line that indicated that the blue line was the pitch that Adobe determined here. And boy, if you can't get the A440 pitch right, then something is wrong. So it totally nailed the A440 pitch, which sounds like this, remember? Uh, so we've heard that before. So what are we gonna do? What changes can we make? we can add keyframes. A keyframe marks the beginning or end of a change. So if I just click here, that adds a keyframe. Nothing happens, that won't change anything. It's still the same. But when I add another keyframe, nothing happens. But now when I change that keyframe, I lift it up, it's gonna change the pitch. I'll take it all the way up as far as I can go, which is 500 cents. I'll explain cents in a second here. See that? I can click it again to add a place where I'm going to begin a new change and drag that down. I can go down 500 cents, which is actually a thousand cents from here, 500 above to 500 below. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay. So we've just changed the pitch by putting in keyframes and making adjustments. So what is sense? Sense is a term that refers to pitch change. A semitone from, let's say, C to C sharp is 100 cents. So if you click the middle C in your keyboard, the next key up is the black key to the right of it. That's C sharp, and that's 100 cents. When you go from C sharp, the black key to the next key, which is the white key, it's D. That's another 100 cents. So each 100 cents is a semitone. In an octave, there are 12 semitones. So from dum, dum, that's an octave. That's 1,200 cents. 12 semitones times 100. So that's what sense is all about. And so you can use sense to make some exact changes if you need to 
or you can use it as kind of a reference. But notice that when I made a change here, it's still zero. It always indicates what the current state is here. It doesn't say that you went down 500. It doesn't show 500 here. It just says that if you make a change now, I'll show you how much the change is. I'm gonna undo all this. I can't go Control or Command Z to undo slight changes to the effect. I can click Reset, that's one way to do it, or I can delete the keyframes by selecting it. They turn yellow when you select them. See how it turns yellow? If I press the Delete key, it goes away. Or I can just click on one and drag it all the way to the top. There we go, it goes away. Or I can drag a keyframe all the way down, it goes away, something like that. Right at the bottom, it's kind of hard to drag it down, so I drag it up. Let me show you another way to change the values here on the pitch envelope. If I make a selection here between those two demarcation lines there, I've got snapping on, so it snaps to those guys. If I take sense and just type in 100, it'll go up 100, one semitone. There we go. If I slide over a little bit, to the next spot, snap to that next demarcation. Type in 200 now, I'll just type in 200. Zero, zero. And you notice as I type in 200, zero, zero, it goes up as I type. And now I'll slide over a little bit more. Oh, you're gonna notice there's this extra little guy here because that, that little line there went up 200 cents from here at the bottom instead of 200 cents from this green area, this little line down there. So I wanna get rid of that keyframe. So I'm gonna click away, make sure that's the only keyframe selected and just press delete and that's gone. Although you wouldn't have heard it, but I just wanna show you how that works. We'll select the next area here. I'll go up 300 cents now, like that. Now I'm gonna do this a couple more times. I'm gonna drag the heads up display out of the way, drag you over a little bit. Go up 400 cents this time. And then we'll go up 500 cents going up the last one here. And it goes up 500 cents from the baseline there. So we're up five semitones. I think five semitones from A, that's A, A sharp, or B flat, B, C, C sharp, D. So da, 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 something like that. There you go. There you go. So that's how that works, a little stepwise fashion. Now, those are pretty abrupt changes. There's an option inside the manual pitch correction to turn them into spline curves. I'll click on this and there'll be gradual changes. Here you go. I kind of got that squirrely effect. That's because these extra keyframes. Let me just click on that and get rid of that guy. Click on this, get rid of that guy. And now the keyframe should behave a little better. Although this one up here is gonna be a little odd. But we'll try that again. And you hear how long it takes to get back down. It takes a long time to get back down to A. One of the disadvantages of this spline curve is that it does take a long time to go from this to that. I can add another keyframe here and bring it down faster and that'll cause it to drop off faster. There we go, that's how that works. So that's how you can apply keyframes. You can use this little guy with selections to bring them up. Because if you use this without a selection, it just lifts everything. So you have to make a selection to just limit it to the selection. When you let go, it'll revert back to zero. So let's switch over to something more practical besides this A440 tone. Let's open up the Singer Pitch Correction audio file and take a listen to that. Just too hard to find. In serious need of repair. So we're going to apply the effect and see how that works. Click on Effects, Time and Pitch, Manual Pitch Correction. It opens up with the pitch envelope visible here because we just worked in it a second ago. So it reverts to the previous condition in terms of how the spectral pitch display looked with the waveform. So that's good. Here's the effect and here is the green overlay. We want to take a look at how her pitch is incorrect. Just too hard to find. Just. We know this is supposed to be an E and that's supposed to be a D and that's supposed to be a C, A, and then back to a C. From looking here, I see E is right about there, but it kind of starts a little bit too low. It starts way down right about here to a C sharp. Now it's kind of hard to see these guys because it's so spread out. So let me zoom in a bit by right clicking here and saying this is really the area we want to work in. So we'll just zoom in a little bit so you get a better view there. Now I want to bring this pitch up, but then I want to hold it at E. So I like that it's at E, but I don't want her to scoop too much here. So right about there, it's correct. A little bit before then, it needs to be kind of lifted a little bit. So I'm going to start by bringing it up a little bit like that so the scoop isn't so dramatic like that. I'm just going to select that area to see how that sounds. Just a little bit high maybe, so I'll bring it down just a touch. Let's try that again. Just There we go. That's probably more like it. Now this next part needs to be a D. That's D sharp. There's a D. It starts out D sharp a little high. So I'm going to click here 
to make sure we don't change this pitch because it's fine. I'll bring this thing down a little bit. We want to aim for the D. We need to bring up the end of it here just a little bit. So I'm going to bring this guy up just a touch. Just like that. Let's see. Bring down the start just a little bit. Bring up the end. Let's just bring this guy down. Let's see how that sounds. Now select this whole area like that and see what that sounds like. Just to Pretty good. A little better than the original, that's for sure. This next thing should be a C, and this just falls off the cliff here. Just too hard. Hard, like that. Well, that's really a mess. So we can see the pitch is supposed to start on a C. It starts on a C sharp. It's a little pitchy, a little high. So I'll bring it down just a touch. Put a keyframe here so we don't mess up the previous one too much. There we go. Bring it down to about a C, but the rest of these guys need to be brought way up. See how this is down? So I'll bring this thing up by clicking over here a little ways and bring it up. Right about there. I'm not sure if this is going to be perfect. Let's see what this sounds like here. Just too hot. It got a little high at the end there. Not too bad, all things considered. Let's move on to the next one. I'll slide the heads up display out of the way here. This needs to be an A. Just too hard to. So this is a A sharp. Here's the A down here. You can see that she gets down to an A, but kind of gets down there pretty quickly. Let's see what that sounds like. Just too hard. It's a little bit high. So I'm going to just click on here. You can line it up by looking at these little grid lines here. Line it up, click on that. Just bring it down just a touch at the beginning and bring it up just a little bit here like that. So let's see what that sounds like. Just too hard. To, that sounds good. The last thing needs to be find, which is supposed to be a C. Just too hard to find. To find? Well, oh, that's horrible. So you need to bring this whole thing down to C. So I'll click here, bring it down to about a C. That's a C there. Now the rest of these guys need to come down a lot. So I'll click another keyframe here so we don't change this. We need to bring this thing down a lot. That brings down the one next to it a little too tight. Still bring it down a little bit. Let me try to fix this up a little bit better there so you don't mess up that other one too much. Bring this in a little bit farther. I'll bring this thing down a little bit like that. Maybe bring this down a little bit more like that. And this thing needs to go up. So this is a really confusing part of the piece here. I'm not sure we can fix this, but we'll try. There we go, just like that. Now this little fella kind of fell by the wayside here as we were working on these other guys. So I need to bring it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna put another keyframe there. Go up a little bit, there we go. See if I can fix this guy up. Now, who knows how it's gonna end up, right? Let's just try it out and see what happens. Just too hard to find. Well, it's got a little bit of an upper cut there at the end. Let's try it again. Just too hard to find. All things considered, as badly as it was messed up, that's a pretty good fix. Now, we did these with these hard angles here. We might want to try spline curves and see if that kind of eases the transitions a bit. Here we go. Just too hard to find. Yeah, probably either you could take your pick. And we could fine tune these guys. Obviously, I'm just rushing through or trying to get it done in kind of short order. But you can see that the manual pitch correction can take some seriously out of whack, out of pitch solo artists, solo instrumentalists or solo vocalist, and put them pretty accurately back where they belong. It's a really powerful tool.